If you have ever paid attention to the names of the weapons you have collected in Monster Hunter, then you may have noticed. Some of these weapon names have a special meaning behind them. Being curious minded, we did some research to figure out what exactly some of these weapons are truly named after. So join us in this 14 part series where we go over the origins of the weapon names for all 14 weapons in Sunbreak, starting with the bow. Before we begin, I should mention that I separated these weapon names into three different categories, those being translations, words from other words, and lastly, names based directly off of something. So let us begin by starting with translations. Going down the weapon tree, the first bow would be the Pyrachna bow, the Cuore de Lavater. Lavater? Lavater? <laughs> I don't know, however it's said. The first two words, Cuore da, can be roughly translated to heart of or heart from in Italian, which sounds rather intuitive, as the tip is in the shape of a heart. But then the final word, Lavater, I still really don't know, but from what I could gather, it could simply just be a link to the word lava, with Lavater just sounding more interesting essentially making the weapon being named the Heart of Lava, which sounds really cool. Next up is the Narga Kuga Bow, and the origin of its name can be applied to all of Narga's weapons. The word Avidya comes from the two roots A, meaning not or without, and the Sanskrit root Vid, meaning to see or to know. Therefore, the word Avidya would then mean to not see or to not know. This having perfect linkage with Narga Kuga being an ambush predator that strikes its prey from the shadows. Alright, so next up we have the Baryoth Bow, which has three translatable names throughout its upgrade path. The first one, the Edelweiss, is a German origin coming from the word Edel meaning noble and Weiss meaning white. Combine the two together and we have the Noble White. Next in the upgrade path, we have the Edel Morden, with Edel still meaning noble and Morden being German for murder. Last in the upgrade path is the Amber Arc Valanga, and surprisingly enough, this weapon gets its name from a genus of bird grasshopper in the subfamily Cyrtacanthacridinae. I'm just pulling your leg. Valanga is actually the Italian word for avalanche. So technically, we could call this weapon the Amber Arc Avalanche, which has a nice ring to it. All of Espinosa's weapons follow the same naming convention of being called Rosen Blank, with Rosen being German for rose. The bow, specifically called the Rosenbogen, translates to what I found as being straight up Rose Bow. And then the final upgraded form, the Rosenzichel, I believe is supposed to be Rose Sickle, as Zichel is supposed to be like Sichel, meaning sickle. Full aiming Espinasa's weapons follow the same naming conventions, except of being Rosen, it is with Cactus, with Cactus, well, meaning Cactus. So the Cactus Sichel is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Alright, alright, alright. From what I gathered from this bow's name is that Kese is French and comes from the phrase Kese Kese, which means, what is that? And I assume that the Kese is simply replaced with the word Kezu, like Kese, Kezu, you get it. So essentially the bow would basically just be called the, what is that? Uh, next up is Anjanath's bow, and this one's pretty basic. The Flammenbogen is a German name that roughly translates into flame bow, while the upgraded version, the Lohenbogen, basically means blaze bow. The final three bows under translations are from the Megala Trio, with Gormagala's weapons being German, Shigara's being French, and Chaotix being a hybrid. The Gormagala bow, the Entbehong, means deprivation, while the Udurgong means downfall. The Shigaru Magala bow, Le Ravisio, means the kidnapper or the abductor, while the Usons means exactly what it sounds like, the innocence. Last but not least, the Chaotic or Magala bow, the Auftachen, means appear, while Disparition means disappear. Moving on to the next category, words from other words. We have three bows, the Elysian Mana, the Kili or Kili Warbow, and the T-Rex Vibrosa. Starting with the Elysian Mana, it likely means something along the lines of a benefit from heaven, as Elysian is a word relating to or characteristic of heaven or paradise, while Mana can be an unexpected or gratuitous benefit. 
Next up is the Keeley Warbo, and this will make so much more sense once you know what Keeley means, because it's the plural word for Keela, which is just another way to say claw or pincer. Last for this category, the T. rex vibrissa, and to put it scientifically, vibrissa is the long hairs that grow around the mouth of mammals and is used as the organ for touch, aka whiskers. Now on to the final category, bows named directly off of something. Going down the weapon tree, we have the pure bow Kuzunoa, with Kuzunoa being a reference to a piece of Japanese folklore. As Kuzunoa is often depicted as a kitsune, it shares great linkage with Mizutsune being associated with kitsunes or foxes itself. Next up is the Polaris' Guidance. Many of Lucent Naga's weapons are named after stars or constellations. This bow specifically being named after the Polaris star which is in the northern constellation Ursa Minor. Or in other terms, it is a star that makes up the Little Dipper, specifically the tip of the handle. Here we have one of the cooler ones, the Perkunas, which is named after the Baltic God of Thunder. This being equivalent to the Slavic Perun, the Germanic Thor, and the Greek Zeus. Pretty dang cool. Here we have another one named after a god, or I guess in this case a goddess, the Selene Moonbroken. Selene was the titan goddess of the moon. While there were other goddesses depicted with the moon, Selene was the one seen as the moon incarnate. The description of the bow states, A bow befitting the hero who stole the heart of a golden goddess. It is radiant beyond comparison. Silver Rathalos' bow, Hyperion, is in direct relation to the goddess Selene. For Hyperion is the titan god of heavenly light, with the name meaning watcher from above or he who goes above, perfectly befitting of Silver Rathalos. Hyperion is the father of Selene. So wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that Silver Rathalos isn't the hubby of Gold Rathian, but instead the overprotective father? So with this one, I found an interesting correlation that I wanted to share. However, I cannot say whether there is any true relation to the two or not. So keep in mind, this is mere speculation. There is a Hindu epic called the Mahabharata, and within said epic, there is a man called King Shalya, who is quite the formidable warrior, and amongst his skill set, he was a skilled archer. Whether or not the two have any relation, I don't know, but I thought this was a neat correlation regardless. The Terrible. Here is another one that may be running off of loose correlation, but this could be referencing the Russian leader Ivan the Terrible, the first Tsar of Russia. Now, there are plenty of things that resulted in Ivan being nicknamed the Terrible, but to summarize, he was a mentally unstable, warmongering, brutal tyrant that brought economic ruin to Russia and destruction to anyone that opposed him. He actually had favorite methods of punishments. Those including boiling one alive, impalement, being roasted over an open fire, or being torn limb from limb by horses. Whatever that last one even means. This is especially interesting when looking at the description for the tyrant's bow, the pre-upgraded version of the terrible that states, Give a tyrant power and his cruelty will know no bounds. Now we're on to my favorite of these bows, the Daura Sigitari and the Daura Toxites. This weapon is both named and designed after the constellation Sagittarius, also Latin for archer. It is either represented by a centaur shooting a bow, or an arrow drawn by a bow. Why I love this bow so much is because the name directly fits the weapon's appearance. As you can see, the design has great linkage to the actual constellation itself. Oh boy, I saved my most convoluted one for last, the Six Glowing Oaths. So, Bishiten is obviously based off of the mythological Tengu, a mischievous being sometimes considered to be a reincarnated form of an arrogant and proud person in life. In the Shinto religion of Japan, Tengu are seen as a monkey deity that sheds light about heaven and earth. However, in the Buddhist culture, they withheld the belief that Tengus were quite destructive demons and harbingers of war. However, that image has somewhat subsided into what is now seeing them more as dangerous spirits living in the forest and mountains. And I think it is the Buddhist ideologies of the six paths that this weapon could be a reference to. Those six paths, or realms of reincarnation, include Naraka, the realm of hell, Preta, the realm of hungry ghosts, Tyria Gyoni, the realm of animals, Asura, the realm of anger, jealousy, and war, with Asura being represented with demigods, Manusia, the realm of humans, and lastly, Deva, the realm of heavenly beings with each of these paths being a realm that a person may be reborn into after death, tying into Tengu's being seen as a reincarnated person. And that's all of them. Or at least, 
all of them that I felt were worth mentioning or that I could find something for. There were plenty of self-explanatory bows or some others that I thought could mean something but I couldn't really find anything for. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the first episode in this series and I'll have even more interesting weapon name orders for you in the next one, so stay tuned for that. But until then, toodles!